Welcome back to AM Northwest. You know, music is medicine. It can boost your immune system and helps unlock your body's natural painkillers. Here to share more about the healing power of music, we welcome the author of I Heard There Was a Secret Chord, neuroscientist Daniel Levitin. Good to have you with us. Nice to be back. Tell me about the what went behind, what's behind the book, why you had, felt you had to write it. I'd really rather talk about dogs. <laughs> <but> <laughs> we both have dogs and love them, so yes, yes I hear uh, you. And my dog helped me write the book, of course. Good. She comes to work every day. Uh, I wanted to write this book 20 years ago, uh, but there just wasn't enough evidence about music as medicine in the peer-reviewed literature. There wasn't real solid right. scientific work. And in the last 10 years, there have been thousands of papers, and I wanted to share that with the public. What so have you learned? What did you find the most fascinating? I think the most fascinating thing is that different parts of the brain process different aspects of music, like the rhythm or the melody, oh. and that these allow, this allows music to get into different parts of the brain for different purposes, like Alzheimer's or helping Parkinson's patients walk, helping people to recover from uh, depression or post-traumatic stress disorder. So you're saying, can it relieve pain? It can. So pain is a $680 billion annual drain on the U.S. economy. Oh, sure. It's the, re it's the chief reason people go to the doctor. Yeah. Doctor, it hurts 80% right. of make the time. That, fix yeah. it, make it feel better. My lab was the first that showed that uh, when you listen to music that you like, it has yeah. to be music you like, your brain produces its own opioids. Oh, makes sense. And they are an analgesic and they're soothing. And so, yeah, music can be a big part of that. You talk about um, Joni Mitchell and her recovery from a stroke because you've, you've had experience with this, so tell me about yeah, that. Joni and I had known each other since the 90s and... Uh, you used to work for ABC Records, is that I right? I did, okay. yeah. And then uh, I helped her uh, with uh, making some albums in the early 2000s and she helped me learn to become a better songwriting writer and we had a really nice relationship and then she had a stroke in 2015. And she couldn't speak and she couldn't walk and the home health care nurses noticed that she would perk up when they had music playing on their cell phones. And yeah. They called me and they asked me, what should we do? Well, it turns out she had, I don't know if you remember, but Starbucks used to have this CD series, Artist's Choice. Yeah, yeah. And Joni had uh, created one of these with her favorite songs on it. And had, we had spent many hours, you know, long nights until three or four in the morning listening through her record collection, trying to figure out what she wanted to put on it. So I said to the nurses, play that. These are her favorite songs. Right, right. And within days, a woman who couldn't talk and couldn't communicate and could barely move, Joni Mitchell, yeah. was suddenly exerting a force of willpower. And it was clear she wanted to get better. We brought in a team of physical therapists and speech therapists, and now look at her. She was just at the Newport Folk Festival. She'll be playing the Hollywood Bowl in October. That is so amazing, right? And also, is it something that if someone has been playing the same music for years, not just what they like, but if they are a musician, like we, um, Glenn Campbell. Yeah, so, you know, musicianship builds up cognitive reserve. Right. It's very difficult. Music activates every region of the brain that we've so far mapped. Just when you're listening, imagine all the other neural activity when you can learn to play something. Right. And Glenn Campbell had been doing this his whole life, and even with Alzheimer's, and, and Helen, I had the opportunity to see his brain scans. When he was on his oh, last wow. tour, half his brain was offline. Wow. But he was still the best guitarist on the planet. And he knew it. I mean, it was just like, oh. he knew all his songs. Musical memories are very deeply embedded in the brain, particularly the ones from your youth, from the ages of about 10 to 20. Okay. Memories build up in, in layers, and yeah. the older ones are in there more uh, robustly, so that even in the face of Alzheimer's or a stroke, those old memories are still there to serve you. So let's say someone at home has a grandmother or a mother who has Alzheimer's or dementia, what would you suggest to them? Is it play their favorite music? Play the music from their youth, yeah. not necessarily their recent favorites. The, one of the problems with profound memory loss is that um, a person will look out at the world and not know where they are. They may not recognize their loved ones right. or even themselves in a mirror. It's profoundly disturbing and disorienting. But if you play music from, say, when they were 14, right. they can finally reconnect 
with who they are, with themselves. They recognize something again, and it's transformative. Now, let's say someone's in pain. Would you say play their favorite music? It might help alleviate the pain. You know, most people know what music they find soothing, and it's different for every person. Sure. There is no pain relief song. Okay. You're not going to go But it's going to be something that you like from your youth. Or, or well, with pain is a different story. Pain, okay. When we're talking about Alzheimer's, we're talking about brain damage where you need to get to a core that's still preserved. Sure. With pain, it might be something new. It might be uh, acoustic guitar for you, instrumental. It might be classical music. It might be a new piece that's been composed by a musician just to relieve pain. I did an event in San Francisco a few days ago with Carlos Reyes. Oh, wow. Wonderful violinist yeah. and harpist who plays on some of the biggest stages in the world and volunteers his time in hospitals. And he just knows how to play healing music. I wow. don't know how to describe That's it. That's incredible. You have a book event, and it's tonight yes. at Powell's at 7 o'clock. We're going to put all the information for everyone, of course, on 10th and Westburn side. Uh, we'll put all that on our website at k2.com. The book, again, is titled, I Heard There Was a Secret Chord. David Daniel Levitin. Thank you so much. Great to meet you. Nice to see you. All right, we'll be right back with more AM Northwest. Don't go away.